When I said mind, I defined mind, so there was no way I could have been equivocated. Yes. Okay, why don't we just replay it? Uh, to hopefully be a rational atheist for you and not dodge your questions. Um, I, I think it's hard to make a case for atheism because it's the absence of a position. Okay, I see. Hold on. I see Jack Gangstrix in here. So, Jack, I'm going to give you one chance. I'm going to give you one shot at this. Please don't blow it. Okay, because this is, probably the last, this is probably the last time. Hold on a minute, Dave. I'm talking. This is going to be the last time I probably talk to you. Okay, um, and so I do see you're here. So Dave, I'm gonna move you back down. If you wanna come back up later, you can. Jack, this is the question I want you to answer when you come up here. If you don't answer it, then we're done. Um, I want you to finish this sentence. Well, first I'm gonna make lay the groundwork. We're defining God as that which is ultimate and a mind. Okay, meaning that uh, God is that which is foundational to all of reality that all things derive and depend upon. God's a mind, meaning that he is uh, conscious, he has awareness, intelligence, agency, those kind of things. So from that, as an atheist, the position is that there is no God. So I want you to finish the sentence here. God does not exist because. All right, I just sent you an invite. You can answer that question, Jack. Finish the sentence. Well, you can't have mental content without a world. So that would be why God can't exist okay, what's a prior world? to creation. Define, define world. Something external to a mind, which furnishes content. Okay. How does it follow that there needs to be something outside of a mind in order for something to be conscious? And you have a lot of background noise, too. So you might want to make your mic or something. Um, you mean, why is it the case that consciousness presupposes something external to consciousness in order for consciousness to be possible is that the question is that what you is that you told me mental content yeah so you said that that requires an external uh reality outside of the mind so i want to i want to understand how do you follow that how does that follow so consciousness is a contentful mental state right consciousness yeah consciousness is a contentful uh, mental state right sure yeah, so the idea about content is, so I take it that content is propositional and what well, comes... No, I, so when it comes to God, we're not talking about propositional knowledge here. Oh, so God, so God doesn't is, have beliefs? Not in the way that we think about beliefs here, no. So what does it mean to say that God has a mind if he doesn't have beliefs? Uh, God is has some sort of a uh, God is able to be one relational and personal. God is able to be um, revelatory. God has, as I said earlier, uh, awareness. God has agency. God has intelligence. That's what a mind denotes. Um. Well, wait a minute. If a human mind didn't have beliefs, would it be a mind? A human mind? Yeah. Well, a human mind and God's mind are different. So then you're equivocating on mind. No, because I defined mind earlier at the onset. I didn't equivocate. Yeah, but in your definition, I asked human you. Here. Yeah, but in your definition, I asked you, right, if by mind, um, in the case of human minds, those properties would apply, and you said no. No, you didn't say in the case of human minds. All the only mind that was invoked here was God's mind. You asked me certain questions, and then at a certain point, I said, no, I don't believe that because I don't believe God has propositional knowledge, at which well, point what, what that, was, that was a was, disconnect. If a human mind didn't have beliefs, right, would it be a mind? No, you didn't ask that. Well, okay. Well, that, I, was, I that wasn't I the first thing that. you asked. But you, I'll just you asked that the just now. Then. No, no. So you asked that just now, but originally that wasn't the question you asked. When I said mind, I defined mind, so there was no way I could have been equivocated. Yes. Okay. Why don't we just replay it? Well, you can't. You can't go back while the thing's going on right now. Is that so? That's to my understanding. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Can anybody confirm that that's the case? The replays don't post until after the room ends. Oh, well, well, I'll wait for somebody to, to clarify that. But in any case, that's, that's the question that I thought I asked, right? So if okay. a human mind 
doesn't have beliefs, would it be a mind? A human mind? Yeah. Um, if it had well, no we're beliefs. We're creaturely, we're creaturely, so when it comes to our mind, we'd have propositional and non-propositional knowledge. Right, so if we had no propositional states, would we be minds? Um, yeah, because we have non-propositional knowledge. So by non-propositional knowledge, you mean acquaintive and procedural knowledge? Uh, yeah, those, those would be, those could be uh, categories of knowledge that would, that would uh, okay. be applicable here, yes. So you're saying God has acquaintive knowledge? Yes, God has, God has knowledge of, of everything. When I say knowledge, okay, all I'm saying is that God has um, not necessarily access to the truth, but God is, would be the very foundation of truth itself. Wait, I thought truth was a property of propositions. Well, God would be, yeah, so truth, okay. So God would be the very foundation of that which is the case, okay, and that all things derive and depend upon God. Wait, is truth not a property of propositions? Yes. It is a property I misspoke. of propositions. Yeah, I misspoke. I okay. misspoke. But God doesn't have propositional God, states. I just told you, I misspoke. So when I say that God has the very, act, that God is the very foundation of all that is, Okay, all that can be, all that cannot be. God is a metaphysical foundation. Okay, when God is when God is a mind. When I say that, you know, mental or a mind, I'm saying that God is relational. He's revelatory. God is um, self-aware entirely. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Well, wait. I, I so got God a is not a there. God is not a God is not a rock. It's not conscious. God is not some some sort of a uh, non-mental entity. Sorry, I got I got lost there. So, is truth a property of propositions? I'm just one, trying to get clear because I, I didn't understand your answer. If you were saying yes, no, I already said yes. it is a property of propositions, right? Okay. So God has no propositional states, but somehow He's a property of propositions. I just I just told you I missed. So did you not hear what I said? I, I retracted the statement I made earlier. I'm just getting, getting clear. You just said truth is a property of propositions. Did right? you not? Did you not hear what I said? I didn't understand what you were saying. Okay, I told you I'm not. I'm retracting the statement when I said that God would be the truth in the sense that He's the, the uh, God is the not the truth. Property. Okay. God. Okay. God is a property of propositions. Okay, so truth is a property. Truth is a property. I said that I, when I said what I said, Jack, Jack. Listen, what I said to clarify was that God would be the very foundation that which is the case, that which can be, that cannot be, that everything that is the case is ultimately going to be derivative and, and dependent upon God himself. Okay? Now, you believe, I haven't gotten an answer to the question, Jack. You believe that God does not exist. You believe that this being, as I've defined, does not exist. So how does that follow, Jack? Yeah, well, what I said was, no what I said was that my understanding of what a mind is, is that it is uh, something that has contentful mental states, and by content, I mean propositions, right? Now you're saying okay. that you're saying that God doesn't have propositional states, right? But presumably, by that you mean he has acquaintive, he has acquaintive, he, so he has phenomenal states, and he has procedural knowledge, right? But he doesn't actually have any beliefs, right? Now, I could grant for the sake of argument that there could be a mind that lacked mental content, didn't have beliefs or thoughts of any kind, merely had sensations, and somehow had procedural knowledge, right? Though it's hard for me to understand what it would mean to have procedural knowledge without propositional knowledge. Um, but if that were the case, I'm just not clear on how God would be an agent, right? Which I thought was an essential property of God, was that he's an agent. Because my understanding of agency okay. Jack, is... All I'm, all I'm hearing, Jack, all I'm hearing from you, all I'm hearing from you is your incredulity, the fact that you're ignorant about certain things, you don't understand, this is that, you're complaining to me about the fact you don't understand. I want to hear your argument, perhaps, in case there's no God. Yeah, my argument is that agency... That, that actions, which is something that agents undertake, actions are rationalized by beliefs and desires. Beliefs and desires are propositional states. Beings that don't have propositional states 
can't be agents and therefore can't rationalize actions. Now, Since you all? agree, those are all those are all it what you're, what you're talking about. What you're talking, well, about right? what you're talking about. What you're talking about. What you're talking about again are things you're you're making the, the the horrible mistake that all atheists do uh, that I talk to at least a majority of them, where you're now trying to put you're putting God in the category of that which is a creature. We're putting God in a creature, a creaturely category, like 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 we are, where we are, uh, ex, uh, you know, beholden to some other out, outer parameters, outer reality, uh, not not us being that which is metaphysically foundational, uh, like God is. Okay, you you're making that mistake. You're doing that. I think you know you're doing that, and I'm advising you to stop doing that. Yeah, well, that's that just seems to be an equivocation on mind, which was the point that came up earlier. So I'm just not seeing how you aren't equivocating. But leaving that aside, you said that the, you seem to think that the uh, set of inferences that I made didn't follow. And I'm just not seeing what fallacy. No, I told you, I, did, I told you, no, what I told you is that you're making the mistake, what you're, what you're invoking here. I'm going to just mute you because you're making a lot of noise in the background while I'm, while I'm talking. What, what I'm telling you is that you're making the mistake that the majority of atheists I talk to make, which is that you're you're conflating who God is. You're you're now construing God as something that is in the category of something like a creature, where we are now out. There is a uh, outer reality outside of us that we are beholden to, and that we are. In the, there's a foundation to the things that we have. When God Himself is the foundation. Okay, there is nothing outside of God uh, that that God is derivative of or that is the source of God. God is contingent upon. There's nothing like that. What you're what you're assuming, okay, in your lines of reasoning is that very thing itself because you're talking about god's uh you know the, the reasons for god's things and god's thoughts and that when you're when god's doing actions he's thinking propositionally um like we are that's not what god's that's not what's happening here that's not what god does so you're doing a, a straw man attack yeah so that that's why i said that and see, you just seem to be equivocating on agents. Okay, if you tell me I'm equivocating again, we're going to move on. Okay, because I just explained to you what I meant. Well, I was just mentioning that in passing, because the point that I wanted to address before getting to the equivocation was the fact that you said that the, well, you seem to imply that the inference was, was invalid. You said, how does that follow, right? As if I had made some kind of invalid inference, but I, I didn't see any any fallacy in the okay jack did you jack, jack did you hear what i said yeah i heard you say how does okay. that follow so do you have a do you have a response to my objection that you're putting god into a creaturely category yeah my response is that when you say that you just seem to be equivocating on my okay i didn't i didn't i warn didn't i warn you against saying that because i have i've now in detail numerous times explained to you what i meant uh when i said god's in mind and god is this and that and the other so i'm not i couldn't be equivocating here if I'm defining okay. my terms. What is it? Didn't I didn't I warn didn't I warn you against doing that? No. See, but the point is, if you say a mind is something. Jack, Jack, listen, listen. I asked you a question. Okay, when I ask a question, I expect an answer. Didn't I warn you against saying that I'm equivocating? Because I defined what I meant by mind, I defined what I meant by God, and I defined what I meant when I said that God is ultimate, the metaphysical foundation, and how God is different and distinct from creation, where we are beholden to other parameters and God is not. Did I not warn you against telling me that I'm equivocating? Because I, I explained in detail who God is and who we are and the difference between that. Did I not warn you, Jack? You can unmute your mic. Yeah, it, you've told me that. Okay, good, good. So, th so then you don't need. So then you don't need to say that. Okay, you don't need to say I'm equivocating unless you have a unless you have an objection to how I'm defining my terms or if there's a contradiction in the de in definition here. Okay, I've defined my terms clearly that God is that which is ultimate, the foundation for all of reality. Okay, and that God is uh, God is transcendent of all of these things, and when we say that God is mind, we're saying that God ha God has um, God God knows and to be no to say that God knows something, we're just saying God has uh, apprehension of all that all things that are the case, and um, that's that's really all that is to, that's really all there is to be said about that. God is entirely self conscious. God is revelatory. He's personal, relational. Okay, that's what we mean or denote when we say that God is the mind here. Okay, I've, def I've said this now probably three or four times at this point, or more, I'm assuming. Okay, so what is the, the issue, or the, if you want to call it a contradiction, if there's a contradiction, I'd love to hear it. 
and saying like there is no uh, saying that the God exists. What is it? Yeah, I just gave you the argument before, right? Yeah, and I told you, and I gave, and I told you how your assumptions here were faulty, that we're, you're conceiving of God in ways that have not been the, in ways that are not in correlation with the definition here. That I've presented. So you're you're saying God is an agent, right? But he doesn't actually have beliefs and desires that rationalize his actions, right? God is an agent in the sense that he can make he can make choices. Now, the way that God makes choices is different because um, choices again in, in, entail some sort of a temporal action. Here, we we think of God's choices uh, in the realm of, of time, and, and because we, we're passing through time, and that we, we see God's you know providence in, in different ways. But God is um, God is entirely free, uh, in, you know, to do things that are in accord with His nature. Um, the way that we explain that, I can't fully explain that because I don't, God is outside of time in that regard. God does not behold to moments and that kind of thing. So I want to understand from you, how does it follow that there's no God? Yeah, what I said is that choices are rationalized by beliefs and desires. You're denying that God has those things. So when you say God has choices, right, it just seems like you're just saying something that's unintelligible. No. Choices are not choices. To be a choice doesn't mean that you're rationalized by beliefs and desires. To be a choice means you're doing something, as opposed to something else. Wait, um, a rock does something as opposed to something else when it falls, right? So that can't be what you mean by a choice. Because no, when I say a, a mental object, there's there's intention, there's intentionality as to what is going on. There's intentionality. No, you deny that he states. has intentional states. Intentional states are propositional. You just no. denied that. I what I said what I said what I said was that God does not have propositions in mind that is that is required for his uh, for his knowledge. Okay. Right. What I what I mean when I say God is acting when God is doing something. Okay. God has certain things in mind. So again, I don't want, I can't fully explain or fully articulate or exhaustively um, the nature of God's choices because if I were to do that, I would I would be God himself. Okay. The point is that when God when God is acting, okay, we perceive that again within time. We perceive God's actions in time, and that is simply how how it how it happens. Okay, that's how we perceive it. Now I want to know from you again. I was explained this four or five times. How does it follow that there's no God, Jack? Yeah, well, I gave you that argument, right? So I take it that action is distinguished from behavior because action is a propositional state. It's rationalized by beliefs and desires, right? So when you say God has performs actions but doesn't have beliefs and desires which rationalize his actions, which is to say that... Um, again, again, you're doing the same mistake I warned you against doing already, okay? When we say actions, we're perceiving those things within time and you're doing so you're equivocating between God as that which is ultimate, and you're now putting him to a category of that which is a creature uh, or, or something that's contingent, okay? God is not something that is making choices from moment to moment like we are. Yeah, I didn't say anything about that. I just said that action. Well, that's, that's, what you're, that's, what, that's, what the imply, that's what the implication is here. Derive it? Uh, that, God is, that God is acting in choices? Deriving because you're saying that God, you said that God is make, you said that God makes choices, and that those choices are rationalized. You by said God beliefs. makes choices. No, that's what you you just said that God makes choices, and those and that those choices are rationalized you, by thoughts and beliefs, as, as, as though there's some sort of as though there's some sort of discursive process. You, you said God of, makes of choices, Jack, right? Jack, do not over Jack, do not over talk. That you said that. No, I did not. If I said well, that, you didn't I might say have God spoke, makes choices. I, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating. I'm repeating back what you said. Okay. Sorry, I'm, when you I'm say confused that God makes choices, now. Because when, when you say I that asked God you, makes choices, all right, Jack, I'm gonna mute you. Maybe I was miscommunicating. When I say God makes choices, I'm not saying that in the sense of us being, um, or Him being in the category of us. Because I made that I made it clear that that's not what we're doing. Um, that's why I also said I can't fully articulate it. So when I when I speak, I'm not speaking univocally or exhaustively about God. We can only speak analogically about God because that's the best we can do. So when th there, are, there are certain times where I might be expressing something about who God is, and that's not going to be entirely uh, exhaustive or be the best representation of, of that, what is the case. What I can do is clarify 
um, and make sure that the distinction between creature and creator is known. Okay. And so when I say that God is making choices, right, then I'm saying that God is, um, God is ultimate. God is one uh, eternal uh, being and the, the choices that he quote unquote makes are, are eternal. God is, God is one pure uh, act, if, if you want to call it that. And there is no thing, there is nothing that is driving or, or influencing uh, God outside or external to himself. Okay. God is eternal. God is ultimate foundation to all of reality. And God is entirely and unconditionally non-dependent upon anything else. God is not making choices in the same way that we are making choices. Okay. That should, that should hopefully clear it up. So again, the question is being posed for probably the eighth time at this point. Uh, how do you rationalize your atheism? Yeah. So I asked you, right. In virtue of what is God an agent? I'd like an answer to the question. Don't tell me what you asked me. I'd like an answer to the question, Jack. Go ahead. So what about atheism are you trying to expose? Hold on a minute, Samuel. Yeah. Actually, I should, actually hold on. We're, we're, trying to, we're trying to get this, keep this one on one right now. So uh, I'm going to move you back down. If you want to come up later, you can. So, Jack, how does it follow that there's no God, Jack? Yeah. So my answer to that question is, right, that... An agent is a being that makes choices, and a choice is something that is rationalized by beliefs and desires. Now, you seem to, th you originally said God makes choices, and that's all that's required for agency, right? Um, that uh, making choices doesn't pre presuppose having beliefs and desires, right? And so then what I tried to understand is how you distinguish between a agency and mere behavior if you don't appeal to propositional states. So what I, what, states. I said, what I said as a clarification was that God is, because I hold to divine simplicity, I mean that God is one pure act and that which is foundational to all of reality is simple, not composite. And we may perceive certain events in time uh, that God, we may attribute to God as, as those events you know, in time, but those are not exhaustive representations of God's character or nature. Okay. So when you say God makes choices, I'm speaking in a temporal sense. Okay. For, for the sake of understanding. I've heard that before. Okay? Well, what's the so non-temporal sense? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, uh, it follows because choices are a temporal notion. And so if God is a temporal, he can't make choices. Now, you're saying he makes atemporal choices, right? And you're saying that's an, an analogy, and it doesn't seem like there's anything in virtue of which that analogy holds, right? Which just seems to be mean, just seems to mean that you're saying something. Sorry, was that, did that come through? Okay, am I coming through? Uh, now you are. Okay. Yeah, that's not that's not the issue here. I said when I said that I made this clear again for the third time. If I have to keep repeating myself, and it makes it becomes clear that you don't know what you're talking about, and that you are, or that you, or that you're not interested in listening and understanding what I'm telling you, then we're gonna move on. Okay, because there's plenty of other people in the room I'm sure who want to talk now at this point. When I say that God makes choices, I'm speaking with respect to how we perceive them. Okay, in time, I made this clear in the distinction between creator and creation, where we exist and are extended within time. And God is not. Okay? So that's what I mean when you say choices. Now, if you want to, if, if you're going to conceive of choices only in the uh, temporal sense, or choices, I would say, only in the creaturely sense, um, then, then we're not going to be able to get anywhere because we can only speak analogically of God anyways. We can only speak of God how, we, how God has revealed himself. And I'm speaking of God in the, in the sense that we know what he does in virtue of how we're how we're looking at them okay so i made that clear already oh well actually now, what i said do you, have, was, do you have a response to that jack yeah what i have the same response that i gave before which is that you haven't specified in virtue of what the analogy holds uh, because i'm saying that we when, we when we look at god's acts actions we're looking at them within time a temporal sphere okay meaning that these actions occur and there's a moment to moment procession of certain uh, events that, that occur and that we, we may think of them as choices analogically, but they're not the same 
way they're not the choices in the same way that we would think of them you know exhaustively or univocally in our sense or we're, we're making decisions moment to moment and those decisions are based upon some sort of a discursive or inferential line of reasoning yeah so what's the common property then uh, the fact that they that they are current well, all I'm saying by choices is that we are we are perceiving certain actions that God does within time. That's yeah, what I say when I make, say God makes that's what I say that's what I mean when I say God makes choices. Yeah, what's the common what property? Mean. Did you understand what I just said, Jack? No, because I'm trying to understand okay. I asked you what the common I'm property it, so is. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it again. I'm gonna explain it again. When I say God makes choices, I'm a, I'm a, I'm describing certain actions that we may say God providentially making. Okay, these actions that are that are occurring and we are perceiving them from a moment to moment uh, procession of, of events, okay? That there is a moment to moment succession of events and that we are perceiving them through time, okay? So when we say God makes the choice to flood the earth, if, some, if somebody wanted to say that, then we are we are looking at that uh, in in the temp in the sense of of a temporal uh, notion, that's a temporal notion, but we're not speaking univocally of God in that sense, because God is is ultimate, pure act Himself. Okay, so I want to know from you now that you understand or you should understand what I mean when I say God makes choices, and that I'm not speaking exhaustively or univocally about God. Only I'm, I'm only speaking in the sense that we are understanding certain actions in a temporal sense. Okay, now that you understand that, do you have a reason or a foundational uh, or not foundational, but do you have a reason or a justification for how it's the case that there's no God? You're muted, Jack. I'll mute your mic. Yeah, because you're saying that you're speaking analogically, and for an analogy to hold, there has to be a common property. Did I not? Did I not explain what? Did I not explain what choice meant? I asked you what the common property is. Did I not explain to you what choice meant, Jack? You appeal to an analogy, and I asked you what. Did I not common... explain to you, Jack? 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 Did I not explain to you what choice meant in this you, case? Well, my understanding was you appealed to analogy. Did I not explain to you five seconds ago what choice meant, Jack? Unmute your mic. Sorry. Yeah, you said something which was response. As far Good. as I could did understand, I not, did I not it, explain to you? Did I not explain to you? Don't I, I don't I don't want to hear the childish answer. Did I not explain to you what I meant when I said God makes choices? Yeah, you you explained that there's an analogy okay. between human choice and divine choice. Isn't that correct? Okay. Did I not explain to you? Did I? I want to get a yes or no answer to the question. Mm -hmm. did you, when you said yes, are you affirming that I explained to you? that I, I describe what God, what I meant when I said God makes choices. I'm affirming that you gave an analogy. Am I mistaken? No, I explained to you what I meant, but definitionally what I meant when I said God makes choices. So it wasn't an analogy. Did you, did you understand what I just said? Well, when you gave a definition, was that definition an analogy did or you, not? Did you, explain, did you explain to me what I just said? Or just, sorry, did you understand to me what I just, what I just said? You said that you gave a definition. Yes, so when I said that, I, I, I explained to you. I, I explained to you. I explained to you what it meant, or what I mean when I say that God makes choices. Do you understand that? So that was a univocal predication. Did you Did you understand what I said? Do you understand what I said there? I I understand the words, but I don't understand okay, whether good. So, you were so when I say God, so when analogy. I say so when I say Jack, Jack, you're gonna have to bear with me, please. I want to understand from you the outstanding question here, which is how is the case that there is no God. I've defined what I meant when I said God makes choices. Okay, this is not an exhaustive, um, this is not an exhaustive explanation, of course, because I, I'm not omniscient. I don't fully understand how God's eternality, uh, and I, I can't fully explain that. But that shouldn't, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, necessitate that not, God doesn't exist. That's not going to give you license to uh, say in an ipso facto that God doesn't exist on that basis. So I want to know from you. How does it follow that there is no God now that you understand all the all the groundwork and all the terms that have been laid out? No, but I didn't understand the terms. Okay, so what what didn't what term didn't you understand? I didn't understand what you mean by choice. Okay, when I say that God makes choices, mm -hmm. I want you to listen very closely. I'm going to say it slowly for you, okay? I'm going to say it slowly, and I'm going to break out the markers and crayons for you, okay? When I say God makes choices, I'm saying that we we experience certain things that God may do, 
through time and we may perceive them as choices in the way that we, we through time may come to decisions, okay, and that we may, um, that we may base those decisions off of reasoning and then act, act on that, okay? That's what, we're, that's what I'm saying, okay? So we compare God's choices to our choices in the sense that God is commit, doing some sort of action that we, that we may be doing here, okay? And that, that, that action is not something that we base, of course, in, temporal, in a temporal fashion. God is not discursively reasoning here, but we are, we are nonetheless calling it a choice uh, because we are conceiving of God as that which is doing certain things in, in, in history. Okay, so I want to know from you, now that you understand what choice means, how does it follow that there's no God? Well, so you're saying God doesn't make choices, right? That only human beings make how does it follow choices. The, how does it follow that there's no God, Jack? Yeah, because a God is an agent, and an agent is a being that makes choices. God doesn't make choices, so God can't be an agent. So it follows Jack, that God already, does not I've already exist. Laid, I've, already laid, I've already laid the groundwork for you of what I mean by these things. I want to understand how this follows that there is no God. I didn't say God I doesn't make choices. I just gave you the intelment. God doesn't, make God doesn't make choices in the way that we make choices. And what so choice, in say, what sense gonna, does he make if you're choices? Gonna, if you're, if you're going to say that. In what sense okay, does he make choices? Then, then we're not. Listen, I'm, I'm explaining something to you. When we, when we say God uh, does these things, we're not speaking in the sense that we do them. Okay? Yeah, so Again, what you're sense making are the, we you're making the same. You're making the same. Wow, Jack. You don't have you have no self control, do you? When we talk about God, we speak about God first and foremost as that which is ultimate. Okay, God is not in the category of a creature. God is mere and pure and simple act itself. Okay, God is God is just pure act. Okay, so I want to know from you. This is why I'm telling you that we don't we don't conceive of God as as choices in that sense. When when I say choice, I'm just referring to how God may act in certain times and places. So maybe that was a mistake on my, or that was a mis mischaracterization on my part, but I've tried to make sure it's clear, okay, that I don't entirely mean choice in the sense that we make choices in which we're using discursive reasoning to come to certain conclusions. And then from there we make, we take action. Okay. That's not what I'm saying here. So I've described to you what I meant for the umpteenth time. Do you have a response? For how does it case that there's no God? Yeah, I've given you the entailment multiple times. What the way that So you I just respond. described to you. So if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna tell me that God makes choices and ch by choice, no, I'm you're saying he doesn't make debate. choices. If you're going to if you're going to say choice and the way I'm that we're saying talking he doesn't about make it. choices, right? Wow, Jack. wow. Wow. Okay. So if you're gonna say choices in the way that we that we're talking about choices here. Then you're just going to be simply mistake. You're just going to be trying to fight God out of existence, but that's not what we're talking about here. Okay, it's a very simple concept to understand. This is not convoluted. This is not complicated. This is very simple. Okay, and so when it comes to God's action, God is pure act. God is pure. God is simple. He's not composite here. Um, we're conceived of God as that which is ultimate, at least. And that's that's all that is to be said. That's all that there is to be said about that. So if you want to take agency to mean choices in the way that we're talking about it, then no, God, God wouldn't be making choices in, in the humanly or, or creaturely category, categorical sense. But that's, not, that's, never, that's never been the position that I've asked you to respond to. It's never been my position. And so this whole time you've been responding to a position I've, I haven't been asking you about. So I want to hear again from your, from your uh, worldview, how does it follow that there's no God? Okay. Well, if you're saying that God doesn't have a mind and he's not an agent, right? Then it's just not clear what's even being refuted, right? I didn't say God is not a mind. And I, and I told you what I meant by agency. And I also gave other properties like God no, is revelatory, God is personal. No, you didn't say what personal. you meant by agency. You um, said okay, that we Jack, compare Jack, human- Jack, Jack, please don't over talk, okay? I've explained to you what I meant by all of the terms I've used here. Ultimacy, God being a mind, God being, God being, uh, making choices. Okay. And, maybe, and I, I said that we're not speaking entirely, uh, or exhaustively about God when we ex explain God's, uh, God's eternal nature or character. We can only speak by virtue of what God has revealed for one. And when we say God makes choices, we're, we're talking in the sense of, of how we perceive God's actions through time. That's what I've said 
that's the position I've maintained. That's the position I've always held to. At least, no, I haven't always held to it, but this is a position I've, I've held to in recent, uh, in recent weeks or months that God is, uh, that has these positions or God has this uh, nature and attribute. So I want to know from you, how does it follow that there is no God? Yeah, so God is an agent. You're saying God, that we perceive God as making choices, which is what agents do. But in fact, that's a mere perception. And in fact, God doesn't really make choices, right? And since an agent is a being that makes choices, if God is an agent and doesn't make choices, it follows that God cannot exist if agency is an essential property of God. I explained to you why agency is an inadequate, if you're going to conceive of agency as God I'm making go choices in the, discursive, in the discursive sense, but that would be an inadequate. What's the non-discursive sense? I just I told mean, you God is not, dis- go. God is not, God yeah, is what's not, what's the non-discursive God not, sense? God is not reasoning. God is yeah. a pure act itself. What's the non-reasoning God is not, God is not reasoning. Agency. God is not, God is not reasoning. God is not reasoning. Yeah. What's the non-reasoning sense of agency? All right, Jack. I told, you I, was gonna, I told you I was gonna keep you on a short leash and it's starting to run out right now, okay? Um, I just explained it to you, what we're talking about when you say that God makes choices. I just explained that to you. And so I wanna know from you, God is defined as, an, as a mind that is ultimate. How does it follow that there is no God, Jack? Yeah, so um, agency um, can either be discursive or non-discursive right? There's no non-discursive sense of agency, right? No, when I say God makes choices, we're talking about God being pure act. You're saying there's a non-discursive God is one eternal, God is one eternal, agency, God is right? one eternal, God is one eternal act. Yeah, okay? so you're saying there's what is a the non-discursive contradi- what, contradi- what, contradi- what is the contradiction in that, Jack? The contradiction is that there's no such thing as non-discursive agency. Right? Okay, what is the contradiction what I just is said? discursive. Yeah, what I just, what, is what, is, what, what is what is what is what is what what is the contradiction of what I just told you, Jack? Yeah, I'm just I'm just you keep interrupting me as I'm saying it. Agency is discursive, right? God is not discursively agential, therefore, God is not an agent. That's the contradiction. I explained to you what I meant by choices already. So you explain to me what a non what non discursive agency is. No, I explained to you how we how we describe God's actions as choices. Well, I was asking okay, you not, what non-discursive agents. But they're not choices. But they're not choice. But they're not choices. They're not choices uh, with respect to God's eternal nature. It's choices. We call them choices when we're speaking of how we perceive God's actions through time. I've yeah, now I've told you this you throughout the entire. I've said this now throughout the entire conversation. I said this not throughout the entire conversation. We're not talking about non-discursive agency. I'm just saying that we're not talking about God's decisions. So when God makes choices and they're I'm non-discursive. Saying, wow. So now you're now you're doing the dishonest tactic again by saying when God makes choices. When I've explained to you that when, when we're saying God making choices, we're talking about God's actions uh, as they're perceived through time. Okay? So I want to understand from you. I want to understand from you with the understanding of the definitions I've laid, to, laid out to you, where God is, God is a pure... Uh, a purely simple being, okay, pure act itself. How does it follow that there is no God? How does that follow? Yeah, so God is an agent. An agent makes choices. God doesn't make choices, as you just said. Therefore, God is not an agent, right? Agency is discursive, right? God is non-discursive. Therefore, God is not. Did an I not agent. explain? Did I, did I not explain to you that God does not make choices in the way that we're talking about them? Yeah, I just said God doesn't make choices. Good, and so that so then when I say God's an agent, that's obvious. I don't mean it in that sense. Okay, so what sense do you mean it? I've explained it already. Oh yeah. So yes, I asked you for the common property. I asked you for times. the common property. So so right? I, I explained it. I explained it, Jack. Jack, I explained it a dozen times. I've explained it dozens of times now. And so you understand what I mean. You're not gonna you're not gonna try to bamboozle every people into uh, falling for for this thing you're trying to do. Okay, the shtick. I want to hear the answer to my question. How does it follow that there is no God, Jack? After understanding what we mean by choices and agency, and ultimacy and mind, after understanding all of that, which you should, uh, after all this time, 
How does it follow that there is no God, Jack? Unmute your mic, Jack. Explain it to us. Jack, are we going to get an answer from how it is for how it is the case that there is no God, Jack? Are we going to get an answer to this question? Okay, so for the benefit of everyone in the room, I've explained to the I've explained to Jack, I've explained to everyone what I mean when I say choices. In recent weeks and months, I've held. Oh, I've sorry, held, the mic was. I've held I'm more. Reading. Yeah, Jack. Jack. All right, that's okay. Uh, I've 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 explained that in the, in the recent um, recent past, I've I've started to hold more and more, and lean more towards the notion of divine simplicity, where God is pure act, God is simple, not composite. This is a position I've I've started to lean more towards that I didn't necessarily I wasn't um, holding to I wasn't committed to that position in the past, but I've become more committed to that in, uh, in recent in the recent past. And so the explanation of this position is simple. We think of God as that which is ultimate, eternal, non composite, okay, and pure act itself. Okay, God is not through time, making choices. Uh, and then we're perceiving those uh, those actions as choices. When we see that God is making choices, when we look in the Bible, Okay, when we look in life and we say God is making this choice, we're, we're speaking in the sense that God is, uh, we're perceiving God's actions through time. Okay, and then we may attribute those things to be choices, um, but that, that wouldn't be a, an exhaustive explanation of, of who God is actually. Okay, we're just speaking in the sense that we, we're comparing it to how we may conceive of choices uh, as, as actions. But we're, we're just saying that God is acting through time or God is acting and we perceive those actions through time. Okay. In the same way that we may act, uh, we may act and do certain things, uh, except we're, we exist within time. And so Jack understands all of this. I'm sure Jack is very familiar with this. I've explained to him what God means. I've explained to him what mental means. I've explained to him what ultimacy means. He already knows it now that I need to explain it to him anyways, but he understands it now and everyone in the room should understand it. And so the question of the hour, the question of the century really, is how does it follow that there is no God? And as as of yet, we haven't gotten an answer to this question. The question is still outstanding. And we're gonna see if Jack wants to answer this question now. So Jack, go ahead and answer the question. How does it follow that there is no God? Yeah, I gave you the inference multiple times, right? I explained to you how I explained to you how you're mischaracterizing God's agency numerous times. Yeah, so you keep saying that you've explained it, right? Now you did I not explain things. to you? Did I not explain to you, Jack, how you're mischaracterizing God's agency? And well, that we, we just something. speak. We you speak of something. we speak of God's agency. We speak of God's agency uh, merely as we are, we're perceiving God's actions through time. Did you not understand that? No, I didn't understand it. Okay, so when we say that God is acting, we're perceiving God's actions. We're saying that, for example, God flooded the earth. Where we, there is a temporal aspect to that event, okay? Because it's an event and there are moment to moment succession of events that, that are occurring there, okay? But that's not how God is actually uh, acting, okay? God is, God is pure acted uh, eternally and that these things are playing out through time, uh, with time, time just being a succession of events as a medium at, of, the, of these actions uh, that we're perceiving. That's all I mean when I say that. Okay, so I want to understand from you now that we understand agency. Well, I didn't understand. Okay, there's no, there's not, now that there's no, now that there's no confusion well, I did, about it. I didn't this. actually understand that. Now that there's no, now there's, now that there's no confusion. Well, about I am this. confused about it. I know you're confused, Jack, but try not to be. Try not to be. Okay, well, try, well, try very you hard. Don't hurt, just, don't hurt, you don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt up, yourself. You could just don't clear up my confusion by answering a couple of questions, right? Which I've asked. I just explained it to you. Times. Well, I, I didn't. Under, I didn't understand your explanation, but if you'd like, you can maybe. Uh, offer a few points in clarification, right? So let me just pose a couple of simple questions so you can straighten it out for me, right? So you want to say that God does act, correct? Is that correct? I'm sorry? You want to say that God does act, correct? There are actions of God that, that are, God, God is an eternal act, yes. Wait, God is an act? God, when we perceive, when we perceive, when we perceive of God and his actions, we're perceiving God's eternal, uh, God's eternal character, God's eternal nature. And those things are, those things are expressed through time. 
Okay, but my question was, is God an act or, do, or as distinct from God acting? Uh, well, God, we say that God is uh, everything that, 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 that is encapsulated within, within himself. So God is, like in Exodus 3, God is his, I am who I am. God is himself entirely non-contingent, and he is he is perfect in that in that regard. God is perfect. He is all that he can be. God is not contingent upon anything else, and God is not lacking in it or deficient in anything at all. Okay, but that's so that doesn't. So when we say God is acting, when we say God yeah. is acting, we're saying God is just perfect, absolutely perfect. So, so you say that is that supposed to be some kind of synonym to say that God? I don't know. I don't. Under, I don't understand where you're confused here. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm not, still waiting. I'm still, I, I'm still waiting. Did, I'm still waiting I'll, to hear. I'm still waiting to, to hear. I'm still waiting to hear the answer to my question that you've now successfully evaded. I'm that you've now successfully evaded. That you've now successfully evaded over a dozen times. Yeah. Well, I'll explain to you why I'm confused, right? Because what I asked you was, is it the case that God is an act as distinct from God being an actor? Right. And then you told me that what you, you well, you said a lot of things. But one thing you said was that when we say God acts, we're saying that he's perfect. And I asked you if that's some kind of defi definitional claim. Right. Some kind of synonym. And then you didn't answer that question either. Right. So we can go back to my original question, which is I'm still trying to understand whether your claim is that God is an actor or whether he is an action itself. Uh, there, there, there's no there's no there's no. Again, there's no contingency or potential. I didn't say anything you know, potenti about potentiality, contingency. Poten potentiality in God Himself. Everything that we see as an expression of God is is, is just it's purely that. It's an expression that we may perceive of, of who God is uh, with respect to His eternal nature. Okay, Jack, I understand you're on, you're on the street, but if you if you could go if you could go to somewhere quiet, that would be that would be appreciated. Okay. Oh no, I'm, I'm on route right. right now, so okay. I can't. So. So when we're talking about God, when we're talking about God's nature and essence, okay, we're talking about God's eternal, uh, simple form or nature, meaning that God is not divisible or not um, distinguished, or I think a better word would be God is not um, divided into these certain into these parts where we're conceiving of God as um, partially one, one thing, partially another thing. God does not uh, any, have any potentiality within him. God purely uh, is is the being who is perfect, and all things derive and depend upon God. Yeah. Okay. So, is that a yes to the question that God is not an actor, or is that a no? No. God is. God isn't. There's no. There's no uh, potency within God. So, is that a yes or a no to my question? I just explained to you. Wait. What was the answer? Is it yes or no? I asked you. Okay. A yes are you no are question. you still are you still are you still confused? Are you still confused? Yeah, about I'm still confused. I asked you if okay. God is an actor. So I'm going to define. I'm going to yes define. No I'm going to define. I'm going to define. I'm going to define God again. Okay. God is defined as a mind that is ultimate. Okay, meaning that God is uh, an agent, and I've defined agency already. That God is uh, relational. God is revelatory. God has. God is aware, fully self-conscious of himself. And ultimacy denoting that God is foundational to all of reality and the basis and, and form or the basis and foundation of all that is the case. Okay. okay, good. So God is an agent and therefore he is I take it agent is synonym for actor. Right? I've def I've defined I've defined agency already. So you No, don't no you to just said God is an agent. It. You and just I, said so, God is I, an and agent. Then I, right? And then I say and then I said, Jack, then I said I defined what agency was and I defined what we meant when I said choices. Did I not? Did I not uh, say that immediately after, or were you not listening like you don't do all the times? I know you don't listen. I know you don't enjoy uh, honest discussion. But if you were listening, you would have understood that what I said. You would have heard what I said. Sorry, you're going a little fast for me, so let's just slow it down. I understand. I under, I know that. I know that. It's yeah, okay. I'm, I'm kind of slow. Jack, Jack, so... Jack, Jack. What did you want? Did you hear the definition I gave to you? It all went by too fast, so let's just go through it. Step did you hear the step. definition? Did you hear the definition I gave to you? I mean, I heard the words, but I didn't understand them. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again. No, no, don't say it when again. Say Let's God, just clarify. Jack, just Jack, clarify. Jack, Jack. I'm gonna define God again. I'm gonna go through it slowly. I'm gonna break out the crayons again, 
And I want you to follow the laser pointer and I want you to follow what I'm saying here, okay? This is not complicated, controversial, or convoluted, okay? God is defined as an ultimate mind, okay? Mind denoting that God has, God is entirely self-conscious, self-aware. God is- Wait, wait, uh, wait. Let's just, God is, let's God go is, through God each is, property. Hey, Jack, Jack, Jack. I'm not gonna take much more of this, honestly. Um, you're, you're, you're completely and honestly trying to be evasive. You're being, you're being dishonest. You understand what I'm telling you. You're pretending like you don't understand because this is your tactic. This is your stick. Okay. And I'm very well acquainted with it. Okay. I've humored it for a long time and I'm, I'm trying to get to a resolution to this issue, which you still haven't answered. Okay. You played around trying to play around the definitions of what I'm telling you, even though the definitions have been clear. You've accused me of, of equivocating when I haven't equivocated. You've accused, uh, you, you've just been all around a dishonest interlocutor. Now I'm going to, I'm going to tell you again what God means. I don't want you to interrupt. If you interrupt again, we're, we're done. If you act evasive again, we're done. Okay. I told you I was going to keep you on a very short leash. I've humored you. I've been patient with you for, for just about long enough. Okay. We're defining God as that which is ultimate and a mind. If we are defining of God that way, if we're conceptualizing of God that way, there are certain properties, if you want to call it that, of God that need to be understood. When we say that God is a mind, okay, God, we're defining of God, we're thinking of God as that which is uh, a, has a, some sort of a consciousness, meaning that God is, God is aware of all that is, and God is entirely self-conscious of himself in eternity past. God is also relational. He reveals things to people. Okay, God is, um, that, that's essentially what it means to be, uh, for God to be a mind. And then I also added that God is an agent, meaning that when we understand agency, we're just saying that God, we, we perceive God's choices in, uh, throughout time, okay? When we say now that God is ultimate, we're defining of God uh, as follows. We're talking about God being that which is uh, non-dependent, non-contingent, unconditionally so, and that all the things derive necessarily and depend upon, okay? So how does it follow that there is no God? Jack, after understanding this definition. Yeah, so you said God is pure act, right? And I take it that an action is something that's performed by an actor, but you also said God is an agent, right? So God can't simultaneously be an act and an agent, so it follows that God does not exist. No, agency or act just means that God is, God is, um, when we perceive things in time, when we perceive God's actions, okay, that God is eternal, that God is eternal, and that God is, uh, is not passing through time, and that God is not, uh, there's no potent potency when it comes to God, that God, there's no potentiality that, uh, that, that is germane or that is native to God. God so is wait, purely perfect. Just... God is pure, that is God is perfect and, and whole and simple. So God is not an action. When we say is God is right? pure act, when we say God is pure act or God is act or God is eternal act, we're talking about God's, uh, God's perfection. Okay. That God is, is not that a definitional derivative, claim? that God is not derivative of anything and that God is not, uh, subject to uh, potential states of affair, like there, there's potentiality within God, that God purely is the the uh, metaphysical bedrock from which all things derive and depend upon. And so we perceive of God's actions, if you want to call it that, as these events that pass through time, God's things that are attributed to God as, as that which is ultimate. We say God is pure act. That's what we're referring to. So you're okay? saying God performs actions? You're saying that God is, God is, uh, God is, no, we, we can't say God performs actions. God doesn't okay, perform we're just saying actions. That we're, we're, listen, listen. I'm explaining to you why that 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 could be lead to confusion. Because again, we're leading, we're going to this idea of choices and temporality, and moment to moment uh, succession of events. So to say that God performs actions again is 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 not what we're talking about. Because we're saying that God is there's no potency when it comes to God. There's a potentiality then actuality uh, relationship between there. Okay, we're saying that God is purely perfect, God is not composed of anything, and that God is foundational to all of reality and ultimate. Okay, so what's so the contradiction? What's the contradiction or the problem? If there's a contradiction or, or some other line of reason that you can give to me that will necessitate the falsity of God, Jack. Right. So the, the contradiction is this. 
So God is essentially an agent. Agents perform actions. God doesn't perform actions. Therefore, God is not an agent. Therefore, God is not I just explained. I just explained to you what I just explained to you what the actions we're talking about here. I just you I just said he doesn't you. perform I actions. I just explained to you the sense in which we're talking about performance of action. So there is a sense in which he performs actions. All right, Jack. Jack, I'm gonna I'm gonna be here. Uh, I'm gonna be doing this for about two more minutes because it's really now showing your dishonesty and in its full glory. Okay, I just explained it to you 30 seconds ago. If you were listening, you would have understood what I said, but you're not interested in doing that, which is obvious. Okay, so if you don't if you don't uh, step up your game, if you don't stop with this dishonesty, then you're done. I've explained this to you numerous times, and I want to get a resolution and an answer to the question that's been asked to you. When we're talking about God, we're talking about him as that which is ultimate, that which is foundational to all of reality, and that nothing derives and depends upon. We say that God does actions. We say God does actions. We're, you're, you're now implying or employing a, some sort of a temporal aspect to God as though he's extended within time, okay, and that, that God is, that, that is what we're talking about when, when it comes to God's actions. God is not extended in time with respect to his essential character or attributes. Okay, God is not extended in time. He does not perform uh, actions uh, when it comes to his essential nature because God is not extended within time. God is God is the pure act itself. Okay, and that God, there's no potentiality within what we're talking about when it comes to God. There's no pot potency. Do you understand what I just said, Jack? No. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, that that was that was a complete another fail on your part. You failed to defend your atheism. You failed to uh, substantiate the claim that there is no God, and um, that—that's. I think. I think that was that was a good object lesson, a good case study for how how we are exposing atheism one atheist at a time. I see Darth here. So, um, yeah, I think. I think. Did you hear the entire thing, Darth? Did you hear? No, no, I just joined, but oh, okay. uh, there are yeah. the regular sophist atheists and. Um, they're a waste of time to talk to because they're purposely dishonest, you know, when they dialogue and debate. So, I mean, you sure. know who these, you know, who these people are. So it's a waste by of the time way, talking with them. By the way, so um, we, uh, there, there's news I heard by the grapevine that uh, Jack is in here, by the way, and he and the other, and the other, uh, his groupies have been conspiring to try to get me onto modern day debate so that they could run the clock out and, uh, and stalemate the conversation. Well, that, so now I'm now that I know that now that I know that I'm not going on modern day debate. Why would I do that? Well, this is well, this is what happened when I went on modern day debate. Many of the sophist right. atheists they just monologue and run the clock out. They really don't dialogue and debate. So Brandon is raising his hand again. Brandon, we're not talking to you. I explained to you that I wasn't going to talk to you. No, Brendan. Um, Brendan has a long history of trolling, right? Brendan. Brendan will lie right to your face, knowing full well that you know that he knows that you're lying and he'll just continue lying. I've had yeah. literally dozens and dozens and dozens of interactions with this dude. And uh, he, he's, he's just, he's just a train wreck. So after a certain time, it's pointless talking with these people when it's clear that they're, they're committed to being deceptive. Precisely. Um, so Brandon, you can put your, I see Jeff. They're not, the they audience. don't, they don't really. So Jeff, you can really, join if you want to. They're not really delivering cogent arguments for atheism. What they are doing is they will respond with a, 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 a tote bag of various evasive verbal maneuvers. They're not really defending that there is no God. Okay. Because, because so, they can't. No, they, how, how could you? Right. Common sense alone would dictate how could you establish a universal like that? Okay, how could you? Did you invite JS up, Darth, or us? Um, that was no, I, I did. I didn't invite anybody up. Okay, well, J, JS is not allowed back on stage because he had again a, a history of doing doing this evasion and deception. Okay, well then, so then get rid of him. Don't don't, don't right. yeah, don't be don't be embarrassed about dropping the hammer on these people. Yeah. who just engage in sophism. And no, we don't call people sophists because we simply disagree with them, but it, it's easy to see it, you know, when they put it on display. Welcome to the room, Matt. What would you like to say? Well, thank you guys very much for letting me come up. Uh, appreciate the chance 
uh, to hopefully be a rational atheist for you and not dodge your questions. Um, I, I think it's hard to make a case for atheism because it's the absence of a position. Did you get that, Tom Rabbit? <laughs>